So welcome to this video. Uh, I welcome you from my little office here in uh, South Africa where I practice as a life coach. And I welcome you to the seventh in our series of becoming uniquely and powerfully you without trying to sound quite twee about it. Um, it's a series on helping you to step into your strength, to be who you are unapologetically, uh, to be proudly who you are and, and live your life according to that with confidence and excitement and, um, and enthusiasm. So the topic for today is about our mind chatter. In other words, that conversation that is going on in our heads 24-7 uh, and uh, how that can affect our ability to really embrace ourselves uh, and become our strongest person. So the, the previous talks have been uh, on a, a range of topics that will help us to be the best of who we can be. Uh, and they range from uh, or being totally authentic to uh, what inspires you, um, to motivation, to other people's expectations. And so at the start of uh, this video, I encourage you to add in the comment box below any particular topics that you would find interesting uh, that you feel maybe needs to be shared uh, on these videos. So I as always, I, I welcome your suggestions. Um, I welcome uh, any ideas, any comments that you may have. And so if you are uh, watching this video from all different parts of the world, I would love you to put in the comment box where you are, where you are listening from, uh, as I'm, I'm trying to uh, get my word out there as much as I can and to all the different corners of the globe. Uh, likewise, if you have, are you listening to this and you have uh, friends or family that are overseas, please can I ask you to share the video if you have found it to be of value. And in that way, we'll also, I'll also be uh, spreading my word internationally. So I thank you uh, in advance for that. So getting back to the topic of mind chatter, uh, what is it actually? Uh, and the brief, simple answer to it is that endless stream, that endless conversation that we have with ourselves. We are often not aware of it. We are not uh, aware of what kind of things we are saying. We're not aware of whether we beat ourselves up or not. And hopefully at the end of this video, you will have a slightly different idea as to um, how to how to control it and how to calm it down. <clears throat> so it's important uh, to control our mind chatter because this will help us be stronger, more positive as a person. Because our thoughts that we have will affect our thinking, will affect our behavior, will affect our actions, and eventually that becomes who we are. Um, so if we have faulty mind chatter, as it follows the process of becoming our thoughts, becoming our behaviors and actions, uh, we'll have faulty behavior. So if we want to change the behavior, we need to start with changing the mind chatter. And so just to give you a little bit of information uh, about the power of our mind chatter. So I want to start by asking you how many thoughts you think the average person will have on a day. Okay, how many thoughts would you imagine? And most people are very, stu they, they're stumped by this question. They don't really know. Some people answer about 5,000, 5, others say maybe 1,000. Well, according to, to uh, different research, it's anything from between 12 and 60,000 thoughts every day. 
And that's a lot of thoughts. So the research from the National Science Foundation says that their, their research shows it's closer to the 60,000 than the 12,000. So if we do our maths, that can work out at about 47 thoughts a minute or close to a, a thought per second. It's not quite that, but close to that. So that's a lot of thoughts. And the power of those thoughts is huge. So the next, next interesting fact is that many of those thoughts that we have on a daily basis are repeated every day. The percentage of thoughts that are repeated, 95%. So in other words, we are repeating the same things day after day after day. And that reinforces the thought, reinforces the action, reinforces the behavior. So 95% of our thoughts are repeated almost on a daily basis. So that is very powerful. And now for something that really might shake you. How many of those thoughts, what percentage of the thoughts that we have on a daily basis do you think are negative? This is an average worldwide, okay? An average worldwide. What percentage of our daily thoughts of those 12 to 60,000 thoughts are negative? And the answer is a shattering 80%. Okay, so let's look at this. 80% of our thoughts are negative, and 95% of our thoughts are repeated every day. So if you combine the 95% being repeated every day and the fact that 80% of them are negative, holy moly, what do we have? A very negative influence that is pervading the way we are. And often we are unaware of that. Uh, for those of you who are, are wanting to do a little bit of uh, research and wanting to know more, there's a thing called the negativity bias which is the way our brain is um, kind of geared. And we are geared to see the negative rather than the positive. And the reason for this is because we, uh, historically, when our brain was being developed, we were being developed to make sure that we could survive. And so we were very aware of anything that might uh, cause us a problem in our, um, in our need to live for the next day. So that is the, the, the history behind it. But the negativity bias is a similar thing. If we are given 10 comments about our behavior, let's say maybe at work, uh, and if eight of them are uh, positive and two are negative, which ones will we remember? we will remember the two negative ones. We will ignore the eight positive ones. So we have a lot of negativity surrounding us in our thoughts, and we're very unaware of that. So I want to uh, just read this uh, a quote uh, from uh, Frank Outlaw, who is talking about mind chat, and he says, watch your thoughts, for they become your words. Watch your words, for they become actions. Watch your actions, for they become habits. Watch your habits, for they become character. And watch your character, for it becomes your destiny. So that really is saying far better than I ever could why watching and trying to control your mind chatter is so incredibly important. It affects who we are at a very powerful level. Um, <clears throat> so 
I also want to, just for those of you who might be a little bit anxious uh, in nature, the link between mind chatter and anxiety is a very strong one. If we are having 60,000 mostly negative and worrying thoughts, obviously that will impact on our emotional state. And if we are anxious, we can really wind ourselves up. In a, in, a, in a major way. So particularly if you are suffering from anxiety, uh, one of the things that we need to do is start learning how to control that mind chatter, what we need to do. So one of the first things uh, that we can do in trying to control our mind chatter is to become aware of what we're saying. So are we noticing how many times we beat ourselves up? Are we noticing how many times we say, oh, we, we probably can't do that? Are we noticing how we maybe encourage ourselves? So the first step in learning to control your mind chatter and therefore the powerful force it exerts in our life is to become aware of it. And the only way to become aware of it is to tune in. So as you're driving, as you're working, as you're sitting quietly, as you're exercising, what is your mind actually saying? What are those 47 thoughts per minute that you are having? Okay. Um, what, what we also need to know is um, that the 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 brain can't tell the difference between a thought that is vividly imagined and reality. Okay, so I'm going to say it again. The brain can't tell the difference between what you are imagining or what you are thinking and reality. The physiological effect will be, well, physiological and emotional and mental effect will be the same because the brain can't tell the difference between what you are thinking, what you are imagining, and what is actually happening. So if you take a traumatic incident, if you keep on revisiting that traumatic incident, the result, the chemical result in your body will be the same as if you were actually going through it. So when we are anxious people, we worry about the same things over and over and over again, we are putting our body under pressure again and again and again. Does that make sense to you? Okay. So there's a little test you can do uh, very qu quickly now to show you the physiological effect of our thoughts. So I want you to imagine a traumatic event, a fearful event, a time when you were really worried, when you were anxious, uh, whether it is a, a big trauma in your life or whether it is maybe just uh, exam jitters. But I want you to put yourself completely in that place. I want you to close your eyes and think yourself back to that situation. Okay, I want you to see yourself in that situation, I want you to hear what's going on. I want you to feel those thoughts that you were feeling. I want you really to immerse yourself in that situation. Okay, so I'm assuming you are there. And I want you just to stay there for about 20 seconds or so. Okay, so feel it physically, feel it emotionally. What are my thoughts? What am I hearing? Where am I? Okay. I want you to open your eyes and I want you to take your pulse just for 15 seconds. Okay, so if you can take your pulse either at your carotid artery or on your wrist. 
15 seconds and remember the score. Okay, 15 seconds, remember the score. And if you like me, you'll probably forget it, so maybe write it down. Okay, so you should have a score by now of what your pulse rate was as a result of the thinking of this traumatic thing in your life. Now I'm going to ask you to do exactly the opposite. And I want you to, once again, you're going to close your eyes, but think of a really peaceful time uh, when you're very happy, you're very calm, you're doing what you love to do. Life is really going your way. Okay, you might be on a beach holiday. It might be when you're quietly reading a book. It might be when you are having fun with friends. And you're in a good place. And once again, I want you to stay there for about 20 seconds or so. I want you to feel, feel the emotion physically. Are you feeling the warm sun? Are you feeling the happiness? Feeling the serenity and the calm? Really put yourself back into that time. And when you are there, stay there for the 20 seconds. Roughly 20 seconds. And then when you're done, take your pulse again for 15 seconds. Okay, so you're going to take your pulse again just for 15 seconds. And if you want to be really pedantic, you can multiply your scores by four to get your pulse rate per minute. Okay. There should have been quite a significant difference between your first pulse rate and your second one. Or maybe it's just that you need to redo this exercise when, when we're not under sort of time pressure. Uh, and compare it with your resting pulse rate. What is your resting pulse rate normally? And how did the first experience affect it? And how did the second experience affect it? Uh, the first time I did this uh, exercise under a neurosurgeon called uh, Dr. Ian Weinberg, um, it was quite amazing to see the difference between the anxiety, increased heart rate, and the calmness. So depending on the intensity of both of those emotions, there should be the equivalent uh, disparity between the two pulse rates, with obviously a much higher rate when you are nervous and tense, and a much lower rate when you are calm. So what that test does is it shows us how our thoughts absolutely affect our bodies, and how our emotions affect our bodies. So if we are wanting ourselves to be really strong and really in our best place, we don't want to be hammering it all the time with negativity, negative thoughts, uh, stressful, um, stressful thoughts that are going to have a negative impact on our bodies chemically, physically, and emotionally. So let's get back, sorry, to, so what are we going to do to decrease or try and get control over this mind chatter that can be so harmful. Uh, as I said, the first thing is we need an awareness of it. And so as you're going about your daily life, try and be aware of what you are saying. Because the important thing is, we have to be aware of what we're saying because we are listening. 
And when we listen, we often follow instructions. Okay, so the first thing is becoming aware of, uh, of your thoughts. And then these next uh, five things that I'm going to mention to you are ways of decreasing the number of thoughts you have. So you are left only with the quality thoughts and not this huge barrage of negativity that is, that is uh, assailing us. So one of the, 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 the ways that everybody knows is to exercise, uh, particularly cardiovascular exercise, go out for a walk, go for a run, uh, put your mind in neutral. And when we do exercise uh, at that level, what happens is we can clear our mind, but we can still actively clear our mind while we are doing the exercise but let the endorphins do their work on you. Um, the second way we can help control our mind chatter is through a quiet time or a prayerful time, uh, whatever your religion is or your spirituality, to have that time where you are just being peaceful, you calming down your thoughts, you calming down your day, you trying to put quality in place of quantity okay so the second way is to have a quiet time or a prayerful time um, the third way is linked to that and it is meditation which doesn't have to be all woohoo and you'll see some of the things I'm going to mention uh, coming up you might consider as being very woohoo they don't have to be they are very physiologically based um, and you can add a spiritual element if you like, but you don't have to. So uh, meditation, there are lots of um, ways to learn how to meditate. Uh, John Kabat-Zinn is one of the forerunners in teaching people how to meditate. But there are, there, there, there are lots of, um, there's a lot of information on it. Essentially, though, what we are trying to do is we're trying just to calm our thoughts down. And it has been proven that people who meditate regularly, uh, they can reduce the quantity of their thoughts daily by between a half and two thirds. Okay, so that's, that's a significant difference. Then it means that your, your whole being is quieter and calmer and more positive. Make sense? Okay, so that's meditation. Uh, the, the fourth way is to do yoga uh, while you're doing all the different exercises and poses very gently. Uh, part of yoga is to calm your mind as well. So that is a very good way to do it. Uh, the last two ways I'm going to discuss are uh, maybe lesser known and can be researched. So the first one is called the emotional freedom technique or EFT, or tapping, where you will use this process of tapping various areas of your body to help release emotions, particularly the negative, worrying, uh, anxious emotions. Um, so if you're interested, uh, research EFT or tapping, emotional freedom technique. And then it does sound like I'm busy doing banking, because the next one also has three letters called TRE, which are trauma release exercises. And they also help one to reduce anxiety physically in your body. Uh, if we need to have one or two sessions in a little bit more detail on those two or three processes, I'm happy to do that. Uh, but otherwise, I challenge you in the in the next week before I see you for the next video, I challenge you to be aware of your mind's chatter and to try and calm it down. So you can do that either through having a bit of a thought journal or maybe you should, I should challenge you to try and do one of the six steps, either exercise, uh, quiet time, meditation, yoga, EFT, or TRE. And I thank you, as always, for joining me today. 
And if you found this video to be of value, please feel free to share it. Uh, I also ask you to join me on my YouTube channel and watch the space because in the next little while, uh, even though it will still be little old me, I will be rebranding. Uh, and I'm very excited to be able to share that with you. So in the meantime, have a really good week. Bye.